Hi, this is Miles Atkinson in Transnistria, the breakaway republic on the eastern edge of Moldova. My journey started in Moldova, the poorest country in Europe, where I arrived after a 14-hour train ride delayed by slow-moving border police and frequent stops. Transnistria declared itself independent from Moldova in 1990. A short war followed in 1992, resulting in about 1,000 deaths on each side. The breakaway nation is not recognized by any other country, though it maintains a de facto independence with Russian support. In Chisinau, I was hoping to find signs of the war, but they were not immediately apparent. We talked to one woman whose husband was a Transnistrian war veteran who was protesting outside of the main government building in Chisinau. There did not appear to be much public consciousness about the 20-year-old war. Young people in particular seem to know very little about the conflict with Transnistria. So what do you know about the, uh, the war, the conflict, anything? Nothing at all. And uh, this is all we And uh, at school we don't study this because we have uh, another... Study universal history. Yes, uh -huh. universal history. Our parents uh, don't, don't, know, talk about don't know nothing about, about this. Economy, politics, we thought about it. <laughs> right. Wanting to learn more about the peculiar state, we boarded a bus to the capital of Transnistria, Tiraspol. Yeah, on the way to Tiraspol, to Transnistria, we had to fill out some immigration forms. And the lady was uh, kind of hassling us in Russian about it. So, but I think we, I think we did it right. So, we'll see. As the Soviet Union was dissolving, nationalists came to power in Moldova. They declared Romanian the official language, and there were calls from the right-wing fringe to expel all Slavic peoples. A large Russian-speaking population had been living in Moldova for years, partly as a result of Stalin's yeah. Russification policies. <laughs> The Russian 14th Army, left over from the Soviet days, took the side of the Transnistrians, ending the conflict. The country remains in geopolitical limbo without recognition. However, it has the trappings of legitimacy with its own borders, military, police, and even currency. We were filming outside of the presidential office when uh, presidential security came out and told us to stop. They asked Flo for her passport. I told them we were just filming Lenin and the flag and they seemed to buy it, so... Um, so then we walked off and got away. That was the first of five times when uniformed men would order us to stop filming or taking photographs. We met with a Transnistrian native named Andre, who would show us around the city. He had co-written a book about the country and worked at the state-run radio station. So we, we just passed the Russian peacekeeping troops and you said not to film? And so what would happen if we were to film and they saw us? Uh... The filming of the Russian troops uh, uh, is permitted by a special uh, commission. And uh, if uh, we would uh, film, uh, you, you will um, have a very serious talk with some serious guys. And uh, they will uh, demand, demand from you to delete everything mm -hmm. what you filmed. Right. And you said it was there from the KGB? Is it still the KGB in Yeah, yeah KGB. It's better not to film the forbidden places. I see. <laughs> Andre took us around to war memorials and sites commemorating the war dead. However, when asked about the politics and life in the country, he gave answers that sounded suspiciously rehearsed and pro-regime. You know that uh, there was a referendum mm -hmm. in uh, Transnistria in uh, 2006. And 97% uh, of people, uh, of 
Кос Транснистрия Преднестровье supported the idea of uh, independence and uh, maybe in the future the union with Russia. Over one third of the population of Transnistria is Moldovan. In light of this, a 97% approval of independence seems unlikely at best. The European Union and a number of other international bodies refused to recognize the referendum, claiming it was fraudulent and unrepresentative. We would hear almost identical answers from others. Uh, 97% uh, it's uh, um, true uh, number наблюдали комиссия из западных стран. The Soviet-styled engine of disinformation and propaganda is more apparent in Transnistria than in most former Soviet states. In place of Western advertisements, there are patriotic billboards and political exhortations. So we've met a few Russian peacekeepers today and a few police officers, talked to them. They've been pretty nice, but it's a little weird because they won't let us film them. They tell us not to film certain things. They're holding guns, big assault rifles. Uh, so it's, it's a little bizarre, and you can see the conflict is still really very much in their day-to-day -day lives here, even if there's not violence or bloodshed. And, uh... So every male in the country in Transnistria has to join the army. So you can see them all over the place. So there's one walking right now. Like Israel. Like Israel, like Russia, like Ukraine. Though called the most lawless place in Europe, and rumored to be a hotbed of human and arms trafficking, the country is suffocatingly orderly and immaculately clean. Our guide, Andre, made a joking comparison to another hermit state. So what's, what's the North Korean elements in this country? Um, for example, uh, this, uh, you know, this, uh, old thinking that uh, if some foreigners come here they are spies uh, and that's why it's better to to uh, forbid uh, them to take photos of to take pictures of this to take pictures of this most of the people we talked to had little to say about the political situation or their country's lack of international recognition. When answering our questions, most people were evasive and wary of the camera. The answers we did get tended to follow the official line of the Transnistrian government. Under the new president, Yevgeny Shevchuk, mild reforms have been made, but they have fallen far short of reconciliation with Moldova.